Hey guys, um, Almighty Zentaku here. I just wanted to let you know before I start this video that I now have a website. So if you're interested in following me and seeing what I'm getting up to, go to www.almightyzentaku.com and uh, I post all my new stuff there. So uh, you can keep up to date by going there. Today we're gonna be learning how to make a, uh, like a game show spinning wheel that lets you win various prize amounts. So here's what it's gonna look like when we're done. It's a little loud, let me turn that down. Okay, so uh, we can press space, spins the wheel, we get a random uh, spin strength, and each of these little uh, wedges have a different value. That one was worth 100. That one's worth 20. There's one on here worth 300 and you get like special fanfare when it goes off. So uh, yeah, that's um, what we're gonna be working on today. So let's go ahead and let's go ahead and set it up. So I'm going to start a new frame and I'm going to start importing stuff from the first frame. So we'll grab the backdrop here. We'll get a spinner object. <clears throat> now this is just the thing that points to the different chunks. And then we also have something called a selector. So let's go ahead and go to the event editor and let's do some stuff. Let's insert a new comment so we know exactly what we're doing. <clears throat> so what we're gonna do is have the selector follow the spinner. So this is going to be an always event. And what we're gonna do is set the position, uh, set the X coordinate to click on the um, position of the spinner and go to X coordinate of action point. And then we're gonna set the Y coordinate to the Y coordinate of the action point. So go down to position, Y coordinate of action point. Now for this to work, let's go ahead and double click on our spinner and we need to select the view action point and you need to make sure that the action point is at the tip. So essentially what we're trying to do here is have uh, the selector follow the action point. So as it rotates. Okay, so we're gonna need some values on this spinner. We need something called spin strength, current ID, and uh, you might need string trans or not. It depends if we're going to actually have the text display or not in this tutorial. I did have that in my example, but we might not get to that. All right, so now we're gonna let the user spin the wheel. So we're gonna add a comment here. We're just gonna say spin the wheel. So we're gonna do this on an input. We're gonna make this the space bar. So go to the keyboard upon pressing a key and make that the space bar. So what we want to do is when that happens, we want to go to our spinner object, set the alterable value of spin strength to our random, which is a random range. We'll make that between one and 50. Um, obviously the higher this range is, the stronger the spin strength will be. So now we need to make this actually spin. So set up an always event. We are always going to set the angle of our spinner object to its current angle. So grab that angle value. And uh, you can either add or subtract the value of the strength. Um, whether you add or subtract is going to affect which direction uh, clockwise or counterclockwise this thing spins. I want it to go clockwise, so that is going to be subtract. So go grab the value of spin strength. Now, We'll do one for maximum quality. Now, if we leave it this way, um, it's just going to spin forever. We don't want that. We need to create a decay. So set the spin strength to the value of spin strength. And then multiply it by something like 0 0.98. Um, obviously, if you had like 99, that would be a very slow decay. 9999 would be even slower. Something like 50 would be very quick. It would, it would almost stop instantly. So you want to keep it in the high 90s. All right, let's test it out. There we go. Okay, perfect. Uh, we do need to, uh, though, recenter this. Make sure this is perfectly centered in the middle of your object. So now we need to put the wedges in here. So I have all the wedges previously made in the other frame. So let's just go grab them all and throw them in real quick. Um, I have eight wedges, but you can have as many as you want. They'll have to be different size though, depending on that. So the wedges are going to have some values. So make sure that your wedges have a point value, uh, alterable value, and an ID value. 
Okay, the point value, as you can see, each one of these is actually a different object. They're not just uh, clones, they are different. Um, you're gonna need to make sure they're all different. They have different names and everything uh, because we have different initial values for the points. Other than that, they're pretty much the same. So let's go ahead and just place these around. Okay, so I've placed all my wedges uh, kind of haphazardly. So uh, maybe when you do it, you should make sure they're a little better. Okay, there's something that you need to make sure uh, is going on with these wedges. They need to all have the same qualifier. I gave mine the qualifier of targets, but you can give them any qualifier you want. So as you can see, the wedges actually have uh, obscured the spinner. So we need to make sure that that spinner is on top. So let's go ahead and make a comment here and we'll say start of frame events. So we got some stuff we need to do with the start of frame. So insert a new event, it's gonna be the start of frame. <clears throat> so what we wanna do is first we need to bring the position of the spinner to top so we can see it. Uh, that's under order, bring to front. And we need to spread the value of IDs in the group targets. So go to alter value under targets, set the ID. Um, wait, no, that's not what we want to do, sorry. Go to uh, group targets and we want to go to alter values, spread value. Um, and that's going to be in ID and we're going to spread the value of zero. So that's going to give all of them a different ID. All right, so now we need to activate and deactivate the wedges. Uh, I forgot to show you guys something. So if we double click on the wedges, you will see, let me resize this. Why is this so huge? All right, you will see that there are two animation um, animations. There's a stopped animation and a walking animation. Both are looped, but they're only one frame, so the speed doesn't matter. Uh, one is just red and one is gray. So essentially this is activated as walking, deactivated as stopped. So we want to activate and deactivate these depending on where our selector is at. So let's go ahead and throw a comment down and we will write activate deactivate wedges. So we're going to do that this way. We're going to find out if the selector object is overlapping another object and that is the group targets. <clears throat> and also we want to find out if the alterable value under uh, targets of ID is different than the value of current ID. So what that means is it's overlap. It's just now overlapping a wedge, but it hasn't overlapped that wedge yet. So this will de-trigger the very first uh, frame that this happens. <clears throat> so what we want to do here is we want to go to the wedge, or sorry, the spinner, and change the alterable value of ID and grab the value of ID from the group targets. That will put the current wedge that it's touching, it'll get that ID and it's gonna put that into the spinner object. Then we also need to set the animation under the group of objects uh, to be the activate animation. So go to change animation and make it walking. All right, so now we need to deactivate it. So to do that, we go to group of targets. We find out if the value of ID is different than the value of current ID, meaning it is not the currently selected wedge. When that is the case, we want to change the animation back to its original stopped value. So it'll be unselected. Let's see if that worked. Okay, that worked. Let's go ahead and throw a sound effect in here as well. So I'm just playing a uh, sample called spin. Let's see if this works. Yep. Works just fine. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna create a string and display the current value of uh, what is uh, what the wedge that's selected is. So go ahead and insert a string object. Throw it over here. Okay. So let's make a new comment down below. We will say, uh, I'm gonna just call it string. So we need to scope which wedge is being selected. So we're just gonna go to our selector and say collisions overlapping another object and then select the group target. So this will scope for this event, which uh, wedge is currently being overlapped. 
overlapped. So when that happens, uh, we want to go to the altable string and say change altable string. And we're just gonna type in something like u1. So plus, and we need to get the value of uh, from that wedge. So type in str dollar sign. Now what that does is converts a, um, a value to a string so that we can display it with the string object. All right, so we're gonna grab that value from this group here, get the value point value, close it off with a bracket, and let's take a look at it, see if it worked. Okay, so as you can see, it does in fact show what the current value is. Now, there's one thing, we can keep spinning forever. So let's go ahead and limit, um, limit the spin. So that means we only want you to be able to spin essentially when it's stopped or nearing stopped. So we're gonna we're gonna add to the spin event, and we're gonna find out what the value of spin strength is. We want to know if it's lower than 0.2. That's just a guess. We might have to modify this. Let's run this and see how quickly we can respin it. I'm gonna keep spamming space. So, it is essentially stopped. We might want to lower it a little bit. <clears throat> okay, made it 0 0.1. Okay, that works. Okay, there's one thing that uh, kind of bugs me about this, um, and that is that when you run it, it automatically selects the first wedge. We don't want to select anything until it's spinning. So, what we want to do is here where it says uh, where we can activate, we want to add another condition. And we're going to just do something like go to the spinner and find out if the flag zero is on. So this will only happen when flag zero is on. Now flag zero is off by default, so we need to activate it. And we're gonna activate it after we spin it the first time. So add in under the first spin, just set on flag zero. All right, let's try it now. Okay, so it hasn't selected anything until we press space. There we go. Okay, so um, we, at this point we could do a lot that's just cosmetic. I'm actually not gonna show you how to do that because you guys could probably figure that out. Um, but the only difference between this and the other example I made is that the other example just has more sound effects and looks better. Uh, functionally though, it is pretty much the exact same thing. So this is how you make a spinning wheel. I will include the example file down below. Uh, so feel free to download it and take a look at it in depth. Um, it has the art in it and everything. So as always, thanks guys for watching. Um, if you need any help, please join my Discord channel or check out my website, www.almightyzentaco.com. And um, yeah, that's everything. So I will see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.